Good morning. I'm Jennifer Shorn, District Attorney of Bucks County. I want to announce the individual standing behind me. Uh, to my left is Chief Deputy District Attorney Matthew Linetti. To my right is Deputy District Attorney Ashley Tuohy. And to her right is Assistant District Attorney Christine Sasani. They're, pro they're the prosecution team assigned to this case. Behind me is Lieutenant, excuse me, Lieutenant Bob Gorman and Detective Tim Furman from the Bus Bucks County District Attorney's Office, the county detectives assigned to investigate this case. Directly behind me is Chief Martin McDonough, our Chief of County Detectives. And to his right is Detective Kevin Pletnicki. And to his right, Detective Jake Gallagher with the Middletown Township Police Department. And to his right, Lieutenant Steve Foreman from the Middletown Township Police Department. Chief Joseph Bartarillo from the Middletown Township Police Department, and finally Captain Pete Feeney of the Middletown Township Police Department. I just want to start with commending all of these individuals for the work they've done thus far and the work they're going to continue to do on this case. On Tuesday, January 30th of 2024, at 6.59 p.m., the Middletown Township Police Department was dispatched to a death investigation at 145 Upper Orchard Drive in Levittown, Middletown Township. While en route, they received updated information that an elderly male had been found in the bathroom with a large amount of blood and that his head had been decapitated. The head of this deceased individual was located in an adjacent room, wrapped in saran wrap and in a cooking pot. Denise Moan, had arrived home and found her decapitated husband and ran to a neighbor's house where they, she asked that they call the police. Middletown Township Police arrived at 7.06 p.m. The victim has been identified as Michael Francis Moan, who was 68 years of age. He resided at that residence with his wife and his adult son. He was a federal employee with the Army Corps of Engineers. The victim's white Toyota Corolla and his adult son, Justin Daniel Moan, were missing from the residence. Justin Daniel is 32 years of age. Police started a homicide investigation and the vehicle was entered into NCIC. Police were advised of a YouTube video depicting Justin Moan holding the severed head of his father, Michael Moan. Multiple calls were received by 911. Details of the video are as follows. The video is a 14 minute and 20, or excuse me, 34 second video of Justin Moan, where it is titled Moan's Militia. It's a call to arms for American patriots. The video appears to be taken in the same bedroom of the home where bloody gloves were found. In the video, Justin Moan is holding a human head detached from the body that was wrapped in plastic. Justin Moan advised that the head is Mike Moan's head. During the video, Justin Moan advised that Mike Moan is in hell for being a traitor to his country. During the video, Justin Moan provides his identity and advises that he is the commander of America's National Network of Militia, also known as Moan's Militia. During the video, Justin Moan advises that he is giving the following order for all militia and patriots across the USA to kill federal employees. He also ordered that individuals from the FBI, IRS, and other federal law enforcement officers, and for those that work at the courthouse to be arrested, that all federal agents, U.S. Marshals, federal judges, and Border Patrol be captured and tortured for information, and then publicly executed. Justin divulges the home address of a federal judge and puts a bounty on his head and heads of high-ranking federal officials. He demands violence against all federal employees, but exempts state government, state governors, and state employees. 
The suspect phone was pinged, and it was, again, an outstanding effort by law enforcement to work in such an expeditious fashion, pinging the defendant's phone and identifying his location. It was determined that the location was showing at Fort Indian Town Gap, a National Guard training center in Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. The suspect drove his vehicle to this location. He climbed a barbed wire fence. After he, excuse me, he drove his vehicle past the barricades first, exited his vehicle, climbed a barbed wire fence, and entered the secured military installation. Fort Indian Town Gap Police Department were notified of the ping in their jurisdiction. Shortly thereafter, Fort Indian Town Gap Police Department and the Pennsylvania State Police located Justin Moan trespassing on governmental property. Justin Moan was taken into custody without incident. The defendant had a loaded Sig Sauer 9mm handgun on him, and it was loaded, as mentioned, missing one round. Justin Moan was taken into custody. The defendant stated he went to Fort Indian Town Gap in an effort to mobilize the PA National Guard to raise arms against the federal government. He also indicated that he wanted to speak to Governor Shapiro to join forces. The autopsy of Michael Moan was conducted on Thursday, February 2nd, by Dr. Ian Hood, forensic pathologist. It was determined that Michael Moan suffered a gunshot wound to his head and then was subsequently dismembered and that the mechanism was the use of a knife to sever limbs and tendons and then ultimately a machete to sever a spinal column. This investigation, again, I can't speak more highly of the work that was done by my colleagues and fellow members of law enforcement. They identified the fact that the defendant purchased a firearm the day before murdering his father. He purchased that firearm at Johnson's in Croydon, Bristol Township, Bucks County on January 29th. The defendant is a graduate from Neshaminy High School in Penn State main campus. He previously worked and lived in Colorado working for a contractor for Microsoft Corp. He's currently unemployed. He has no history of diagnosed mental health issues and there are presently no 302s or 201s in his history. I am going to turn it over to Chief Joseph Bartarillo and then we'll be available to answer any questions you may have. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chief Joe Bartarella from the Middletown Township Police Department. So I want to start off just by saying that me and my entire police department, are, our hearts ache for the Moan family. Um, I know we had a meeting with them last night at our police headquarters with victims advocacy, and I just want to let everyone know that, that we will be with, their, with them every step of the way through this incredible ordeal that they're going through. And also our uh, Upper Orchard community, which is one of our small communities within our Levittown section of our township, you know, as the whole community mourns and aches over this, that our police department will be right there with them as they recover, you know, on the road to recovery from uh, what they've had to experience. You know, the family was very well known, had a lot of neighbors and close friends that really cared about them. So I just want to put that out there first and foremost. Uh, next, uh, the one thing I, I want to do is recognize all of the law enforcement agencies that played, you know, such a huge role in making such a fast apprehension and bringing closure to this in just in getting the apprehension within hours of the crime occurring. Uh, we were discussing that if Justin hadn't been apprehended, can you imagine the, the manhunt that would have been underway? you know, shortly thereafter and how everything would have been focused on finding him and how the entire community would have been in a state of panic. So one of the things I want to do right now is just praise our, our law enforcement. From my police department, uh, our detective sergeant, Zach Brocious, he's the one that actually did, you know, what they call it the ping, I say tracking Justin's cell phone and pinpointing where he was. Two of our detectives are here, our lead detectives on the case, Jake Gallagher and Kevin Platnacki, but all of our detectives are at the scene that night. And that was our, our first priority, you know, getting to the scene, preserving the scene, but then locating 
Justin, who went quickly from a person of interest, obviously, to the suspect. Um, and, and with that, a uh, police department that I'm learning more about uh, every day, the Fort Indian Town Gap PD, who did an incredible job of rapidly responding when we called them and told them that we had a general idea of Justin's location based on cell phone tracking. Uh, they located, Fort Indian Town Gap Police Department located his car first, and then later on, based on continuous cell phone tracking, were able to locate and detain him without incident. Um, I, I don't know the full circumstances as to where he was detained. I think he did climb over a fence and get into the, the fort. He might have been armed, but you'll have to ask their police department about it. I'm very grateful to the Fort Indian Town Gap PD for the outstanding work they did in getting that apprehension as quickly as they did. So um, given that, I, I do want to thank them and also Pennsylvania State Police. And, and in addition to, to our police department, we're very blessed to work in a county where we have an outstanding relationship and we do a lot of mutual aid and we assist each other. We're 39 small police departments, 43 law enforcement agencies supported by what I think is the best district attorney's office in the state. So I want to thank District Attorney Shorn, um, Chief of County Detectives uh, Martin uh, McDonough, and his entire staff, and also our coroner's office as well, uh, for their incredible uh, support in helping us process the crime scene and being there to provide the additional resources that we needed um, in order to handle, you know, what, what has become, you know, a, a very um, significant event and, and case that's gaining, gaining, you know, national, if not worldwide attention. So I just wanted to make sure that I thanked, you know, everyone who supported us through this. So uh, our detectives were on it from the start, and they're still working. We've been very busy, and we're going to continue to be busy, uh, you know, as we, we continue to work through uh, investigating this case. It's not over just because an arrest was made. There's still a lot of information that has to be done to ensure you know, that we move through with a uh, successful prosecution. So um, with that, I really don't have anything else to add. <laughs> Hang on one second. I don't have anything else to add. So I will, I will just defer to uh, District Attorney Shorn first um, if she wants to take questions before I do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chief Carter. Uh, I appreciate it. Can you indicate to me what sets him off to kill his father Tuesday night? Uh, so I have shared the information that I'm able to share at this juncture. As you know, this is an ongoing investigation with the most talented members investigating this case. Um, I can't speak to anything further beyond what I conveyed thus far about statements made. Yeah, is there any evidence he was a member of a militia? Obviously. Militia obviously, I think his um, online manifesto speaks for itself at this juncture. Um, again, this is going to be an ongoing investigation for months, and we'll continue to investigate this through the successful prosecution with this team present. Jen, how concerning is this to you and everyone up there that this was up online as long as it was the calls for violence that were out there, that it was up as long as it was? That was incredibly concerning. I mean, obviously, from an evidentiary value, that video is very important, and we need to have possession of that. But it's quite horrifying how many views we understand it, it had before it was taken down. Obviously, we were able to capture and secure that video because it's pretty self-explanatory as to who's responsible, although these are allegations at this point. Um, so that's very concerning. And I got to tell you, uh, Jim, when um, to Chief Bartolorello's point, the fear of what this could have been, I know that Chief McDonough and I were expressing that that night. I know Chief Bartolorello was living it that night, and it was thanks to this outstanding collaboration of the men and women in law enforcement. Um, and also, I should mention, the U.S. Uh, marshals assisted in making sure that uh, individuals named were safe. Um, but that was the uh, reassurance that we all needed to know that we're safe and that this case will be prosecuted. Was, was he a legal buyer of that gun that he buys the he was. day before killing? He was. There was nothing legally precluding him from purchasing that gun. In fact, our investigation has revealed that he surrendered his mar medical marijuana card so as to be eligible to legally possess a gun. That also shows you the clear state of mind that he was in, having planned what he ultimately carried out. Did you have a mental health evaluation yet? Um, I'm sorry, uh, I can't speak to that. Did anyone have any interaction with YouTube, and what was that like in terms of a protocol to get that video down? Are you referring to anyone, yes, present team here? Uh, one second, please. We believe the federal uh, authorities conveyed that, but also 
ultimately after the number of views, the content obviously became, uh, that's, that's a flag, that's a shot over the bow that something's unusual in that short period of time. So it, it came down pretty quick once we knew about it, but it was, um, excuse me. We did take steps, obviously, to preserve it, and we do have we have that video. So do you know how many views it got and how long it was up for? I'm sorry. Do we know how many views it got and how long it was up for? I know at some point when I was aware of it, there was over 5,000 views. Okay. Do you know he had no 302s, but some neighbors said that they had reported him to police. Had he come to police attention before this? This I'm going to turn that over to Chief Bartarello um, as it relates to that. I know, I know you've been patiently waiting. Uh, is it a separate, same, same question? Then I'll step aside. So I have been emailed by uh, several reporters regarding uh, our police department's past contact with Justin Moan. So we went through our records management system, and we, our police department has had three prior contacts, two direct, one indirect. One was in 2011 when Justin was 19. He had an argument in his uh, home driveway with someone. There was nothing criminal there, and that was resolved. One was in 2019. Uh, Justin reported that he received a threat from someone at Progressive Insurance in Ohio because he was suing them and just wanted a record of it. And then last year, we did not have contact with Justin, but his employer from Philadelphia called one of our officers and just expressed concern about, you know, Justin's behavior at work and wanted legal advice on how to go about terminating his employment, which we, we don't do. The police department doesn't offer that. That's for his, you know, individual employer. So we, we did refer the employer, uh, you know, to seek out, you know, legal resources for that, and also because it was in Philadelphia to, you know, refer anything work-related, you know, if they were concerned to the Philadelphia Police Department. That's, that's the only contact. I know we, we keep hearing that uh, police were outside of his home uh, at various times, outside of, you know, what I, what I just mentioned. I can only speak for the Middletown Township Police Department. We, we were not. Not that we're aware of. It was never reported to us. Chief, when the employer calls and mm -hmm. says, I need legal advice how to fire this cat, um, does that prompt you to go to him? Do you have any contact with him after the we, employer We didn't call? go to him after that because the, the officer asked if, you know, there were any, was there any criminal action on his part or any threats made or anything like that. I think there was concern over, I guess, what Justin was writing, some novels that he was writing. But we did not have contact with him after that, Do you think no, you direct have? contact. Based on what the officer, the information that the officer gathered um, and, and what the decision the officer made, no, I don't, I don't think we, we needed to have contact Chief, with him after I that. I believe D.A. Shorn touched on his intentions out in uh, Fort Union Town Gap. I don't know if any colleagues of Gap Police were in contact with you. I just wanted to ask again if there's any way to know what he might have been up to or what the next few hours, had he not, might, had he not been caught, might have helped. So you're asking I'm if, asking what his right, so if we tracked him up there and he hadn't been apprehended, what, what he would have I done? I know that's a I'm just asking, right. in, in, in talking with him, since arrest, yes. what you believe in his So I, 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 have, I, have, I have no idea what he said since arrest, and, right. and I wouldn't be able to share that anyway, and, and I don't know what his intentions were, except that he was armed inside a, a National Guard base, so. Do you know if he's facing federal charges with the feds are involved? I, I'm, I'm not sure. He he was was the 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 or chief. Sometimes with these online internet calls, there's some sort of dark web incel culture. Do we have any indication that anyone took this call seriously? Did he have any sort of online support in what he was calling for? I, I think that he was posting some things on Discord. Right. Yeah. Do you want to, you want yeah, to speak to I'll, that? Yeah, I'll speak to that. Obviously, as mentioned, this is still very much an ongoing investigation. And this investigation will take months, not days. Um, but we do know that there was some communication on Discord um, as far as that is what we've learned, and we're still investigating that. Um, so as it relates to some of the things he conveyed in this video and his beliefs and position, um, the one thing I want to state again is, it was evident to us that he was of clear mind in his purpose and what he was doing. Aside from what his beliefs are, he was of clear mind doing this, and that's an important fact to us in this prosecution. DA, do you expect you'll have a, you'll have a defense attorney claiming that he was uh, insane, that he's a mental, and so for, to, to, your argument is being made right here. Well, you, clear mind, 
got rid of his marijuana license, got a gun, he knew what he was up to. Any time we have a murder case, we anticipate what issues we may face in the subsequent prosecution. One of the things we always look at is, is there go going to be a later claim of McNaughton insanity? Um, that is a very specific definition where somebody is unaware of the nature and, and consequences of their actions. Not that they're perhaps what the common term crazy is, but it is a very specific terminology. And I can state with the evidence we have uh, gathered thus far, this individual was acting with clear mind, aware of his uh, actions and proud of his consequences. Aren't you in a position to cut your father's head off? I mean, isn't that an insane act? There is a complete and utter difference between what we would term that person's crazy to what is legal insanity. And that will be evident later when we prosecute this matter. Can you say, hold on, forgive the question, but if, I, if I'm not mistaken, you said that uh, Mr. Mung, the father, also had limbs? No, no, his head was, his head was dismembered. Just yes, dismembered. decapitated, dismembered, post-mortem. Okay. Do you know how long he had been planning this? So you got the gun the day before. Do we know how far back beyond that? We don't at this juncture. It's still pending. Obviously, we're going to gather, gather as much information as it relates to that. How long was he in the base before he was arrested? Uh, we don't believe it was that long. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, we're still gathering that information. Um, we obviously have a pretty good sense of his movements based on the investigative work that was done. Um, and we believe shortly after the post that he, his, his um, path of travel was directly to Fort Indian Town Gap. And that is consistent with the timeline that we know. He lived with his parents. It's not like he was some estranged son who came out of nowhere for some sort of vengeance against his father. Is there any indication from mom or any other relative that there was anything leading up to this? I can't speak to that at this juncture, but I can echo what I could not have said better than Chief Bartarillo in that our thoughts are with this family. This is the unimaginable. Right. Um, so, you know, that's going to take time. We're going to provide the resources for this family, but this is truly just unimaginable for them. So, you know, again, we'll continue to investigate. Yeah, are there any new charges? Uh, he, he took his father's car, for example. Was, was that mean additional charging on that front? We, it is not uncommon for us at some point later to add charges. We'll, we'll evaluate that. This team of you know, attorneys will evaluate what charges additionally are appropriate, but we wanted to make sure that we were charging immediately that night to take him into custody, and he is in custody without bail at the correctional facility in Bucks County. Do we know when he gave up his medical marijuana? Uh, days before. In his video, he had alluded that uh, he had a previous contact with the FBI. Are you or Middletown Police aware of any previous contacts with the FBI, Federal Protective Service, Secret Service, any of those federal agencies? All questions as it relates to any federal probe or, you know, uh, federal um, contacts that existed prior to this homicide investigation, I'm going to refer to the FBI or the Department of Justice to field those questions. Is he talking to you? I can't speak to that. Does you know, answer your question? I can't you speak asking? to that. I'm, I'm not. We're not able to speak to that. Is he proud of what he did? Do you think? I mean, look at the picture there. He seems pretty calm and somewhat proud of himself. I think you can draw conclusions, your own conclusions. And I'm not being. I'm not saying that in a facetious manner from the video and how he. For those of you that viewed it, how he presented on that video. So, uh, but I can't speak to that. Out of his 131 subscribers, are you investigating any of those for? answering this call to arms that he put out? We'll obviously investigate anyone and everyone who is associated with this homicide, with the subsequent dismemberment, with the then events to flee the scene. Um, we will consider anyone who may be an accomplice. Was anyone else in the house when this happened, or was it just the victim's wife when she came home? The victim's wife who discovered it. was She was home alone. Uh, so if there's not any other questions, um, I think you can go ahead. Um, you said he'd never been diagnosed. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I can't speak to that. Oh, okay. I, I can't speak to that. Do, do we know um, how he got his marijuana card? I don't know that. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate you being here.